So hi everyone, I'm Roland and I'm very happy to have Daniel de Oliveira as my partner for this discussion. And I read one of his uh, papers about the law and Christianity, how a new perspective on uh, interpreting Shaw's doctrine or the Apostle Paul's doctrine on the law and in general Christianity and the law. I found it very interesting and I recommend it to everyone. And let me just pass it on to Dania and please just introduce yourself, whatever you want people to know about you, Dania. Welcome. Hello, everybody. Yeah, my name is Daniel. I am from Brazil originally, but today I live in Turkey. I did my master's degree here in religious studies, uh, you know, in an Islamic university. So you ask, how come you're talking about the, the Judaism and the law in an Islamic university? Yes, because my friend Muslims, they were very, very uh, curious about the subject, especially because, because I came, yeah, yeah, I am a Christian, yeah, believer of the law, you know, I keep the law and the Torah. And um, so it was interesting to me to see this debates and religious studies and, and all the dynamics between religions, religious dialogue. So I was curious about that. And then my, my advisor, he mentioned about Paul and how it would be interesting to show Muslims uh, the, the beliefs of the, the law. So I uh, went in the search and writing, you know, about the law and the Paul, Pauline's perspective on the law. And, you know, and, and I saw some themes that were recurrent, uh, very, very current in the, in, the, um, in the subject of the New Testament and law and so on. So I went into definitions of, new, uh, of law into the New Testament. I went to search uh, Paul's view especially of the uh, of what is law you know the word logos in uh, no not logos sorry nomos in the new testament the greek word and his definition of nomos and then i i went through all of this and and yes so uh, it came up this uh, this thesis so that's it okay excellent and if we are here what uh, how, what would you say you you christian is there any denomination you belong to? Yeah, I, you know, I grew up in a Christian context in Brazil. I would say like a Protestant uh, church, you know, and I would go and I wouldn't even, uh, you know, be very at attend the church and with my parents and everything. I would play drums in the, you know, in the, in the worship times and so on. Uh, but you know always very like light and never very interested in in the bible and in in the religious studies you know in the religious life so i start researching actually when i was around 17 or something and then i start studying actually the bible deeper with the adventists so hmm. the seventh day adventist uh, the church and so on so i start attending there you know and learning a lot and and this was my perhaps my first contact deeper with scripture and, you know, with the biblical tradition, the biblical narratives, the classical doctrines and everything. So I started studying it. I went to college. I did my bachelor's degree in theology. And then I came, uh, I met my wife. Uh, we came to a program in the Middle East. We were studying here. And then uh, she, she, uh, she is like an engineer, so she studied here. And then I got the opportunity to, to, to study, again, a master's degree in religious studies. So basically, that was my, you know, uh, it came to me like uh, interest that actually, uh, yeah, it just keep, uh, I kept going deeper and deeper in this and learning Hebrew, learning Greek and learning the, all the, the context. It was very pretty amazing. Yeah. Right. Excellent. And did you say... You started with Adventist because I, I figured that you have a few, um, a few times you mention Adventism in your this uh, mm -hmm, work. Mm -hmm. But are, would you still consider yourself an Adventist now? Yes, I am an Adventist. Yes, I'm still an Adventist, and I, you know, I, I pretty much agree with more most of the doctrines of the Adventists. 
and uh, there is 28 beliefs and yeah. among them are the doctrines of the sanctuary which is biblical i mean it's all through the old old testament or the tana and yes. also in the in the new and also the ten commandments the law uh yeah, yeah i i pretty much i really uh, yeah i mm -hmm. keep this and i am adventist yes uh -huh. because uh, that's why we call seventh day adventist seventh, seventh day adventist <laughs> Have I mentioned that I'm I'm doing my bachelor's in Hungary in the Seventh Day Adventist College, that the oh, university? Really? Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, because that's awesome. That, yeah, um, I, 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 if I finish, uh, if I finish, I want to uh, do masters, but I might move to another uh, institution. Not, nonetheless, it was because they don't have. Uh, school on saturdays or teachings on saturdays and i keep saturdays um and and that was the main uh -huh. reason but, but i love it it's very good actually i learned so much yeah, so yeah. much I, I wouldn't say that's mm, good yeah it, it, it's excellent everybody's very kind and and, and great although it's uh, i'm not full-time so there's very little time to like contact time with the mm, tutors mm -hmm. nonetheless I, I like it okay so so that's a and would you just you obviously you touched on this but in general what do you think about the law and and christianity nowadays yeah this is a very serious nowadays yeah you know as i came from a christian uh, i mean i am a Christian since I was born and Adventists, they call themselves Christians, but it depends on the country. It, it can be more like a, another tradition and so on than the Christians. Some people would yeah. say that even here when I live in Turkey. Uh, you know, uh, for me, Christianity today uh, in a whole, like I would say more into the Protestant area because I came from there. I see that there is a big gap between the the main doctrines of the Protestant uh, worldview, which is the sola scriptura. You know, like I've heard that so many times. Is yeah. Even I didn't know when I didn't know Latin and everything, the sola scriptura and so on, sola fide, so all this stuff, and the Reformed tradition, uh, Luther, you know, and also the New Reformation, and so on. like. I've I've seen uh, all of this uh, the big tradition that is coming after the Reformation and everything. I've experienced that, and I see that today, uh, especially in Brazil, there is a big distance between what whatever Luther or Calvin or others, uh, you know, champions of the Reformation said, and what is actually happening. Yeah. You know, so I see today that. It's uh, today we have a new kind of medieval, uh, whatever, Catholic Church in the Protestant Church, Protestant world in Brazil. That's why I see that there's a big gap in, in, in I mean, phenomenology speaking, I, I say. But if you go to the theory, if you, if you go to the, to the doctrines or, or their systematic theologies, they look all the same. But actually, it's, there's a big gap in there. So... That's why when come to the subject of law, I was intrigued because law means many things to different people, uh, especially in the Protestant worldview. Yeah. So that's why for me it was like, okay, you guys talk so much about law, but what it is, it is, you know, what is law indeed? Just tell me from your own doctrine, Solex Scriptura. So that's why I went deeper into this and see what Paul or, or, or the apostles, even to Jesus, what m law meant. Right. Basically, if I understand you correctly, you, you say what I think is there's a huge schism between what they say and what they do. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is uh, what I observed, what I have been observing, as much as I understand, is slowly, gradually, with time, the law just kind of fades out of uh, mm -hmm. the whole religion. 
nowadays that's true nowadays is kind of like uh, i don't know it must be the, similar to what happened when constantine in that era in terms of the pagans i don't think there's much difference between christians in general and people in general you understand mm. they all just talk about faith but in terms of their actions or behavior there's very little difference between christians and uh, the people who don't profess to be christians that's my observation mm. there's too so much talk about grace and i think you uh, had a few pages about grace and the law mm. Mm. and mm -hmm. i think at yes. some point i don't know when but it it, it seems luther and the, during the reformation something happened when this law against grace kind of uh, yes. dynamic uh, happened uh, exactly what do you think about that yeah what i see you know that the this conversation the whole conversation of law against grace it's a big misconception uh that actually luther created you know mm -hmm. um he saw he was living if you if if i could understand in very general and simple terms and i'm, I'm this is not my own ideas of course i'm quoting from many authors here uh, i mean i could say uh there is a very important book which is paul and palestinian judaism from ep sanders you know in the 70s he wrote this book and it was amazing uh academic especially in the u.s Many people um, just claim, uh, claimed him for that, and it's still going on on these debates on on you no know, and like the perspective of Luther. Actually, before him, uh, there is like um, many uh, many dis discussions, but actually it was the first the first one that mentioned uh, about the misconceptions or the you know perhaps the Western mindset uh, regarding the law. And the, the life of Christianity and so on was Christian Stendhal. Christian Stendhal, you know, he he was a Luther uh, pastor, Lutheran pastor, and he he just came about and he said, you know, you guys are reading uh, Luther. I mean, whatever uh, uh, reading that Luther had regarding Paul was wrong. And then it <laughs> was a big, you know, for a Lutheran to say that. That's huge, huge, and. Uh, he was uh, in, in Harvard University at that time. And then later on came after him, uh, as I said, E.P. Sanders. E.P. Sanders, he just constructed on that. Uh, he he went deeper into uh, reading the Dead Sea Scrolls and, you know, uh, and understanding about the Quran com community and so on. And he could amplify even more that uh, Judaism, as they, as Luther points out, it's not a religion of legal, a legalistic religion. Right. This is a big uh, Western mentality that actually later on created what we saw in Germany, uh, you know, a Holocaust and right. everything. But in Judaism, there's no such a thing as legalism. Actually, what we saw, what we see in the New Testament is an attempt of the Jews to protect the people of not going into sin. But not that they were saying, oh, if you, uh, you have to behave right. to be saved actually no the idea was um even for paul you know in, in in the old testament also that you were saved because you're seed of abraham because of the promise that god gave this is salvation by grace yeah. this is completely salvation by grace and the jews knew that they, they we are the elect race we are the elect people now we have to behave not to lose this status okay. that's why you have all these discussions, you know, and, and, and with uh, Jesus in the New Testament and so on. So the perspective changes completely. It's not law against grace. It's grace plus law. It's different. It completely shifts the narrative right there. So we see that Paul, now yeah. he's, not, uh, he's not writing uh, to the Galatians or anyone just to say, you guys are falling from grace because you're trying to keep the law. No, he's doing the opposite, saying, you guys are saved and you're making, you know, those who wants to enter in the covenant through the, the grace, you're right. putting stuff, the stuff for them that is not needed. So it's the, the narrative just shifts. It's, right, it's right. interesting. 
No, I I understand and I agree totally. I agree. Even even the name Pharisee comes from a kind of fans thing. I think it's what what it means in uh, in Hebrew. So they try to build a fence around the law, as you said. So people, mm -hmm, yeah, right. So people wouldn't break it. And again, this what you say, and I believe wholeheartedly this um, grace plus works and I think uh, I understood it quite well from your uh, writing and also I found many other people proving this exactly the same thing that Jews or Israel let's say they didn't think they need they have to keep the law perfectly so they're gonna be saved or that that's going to be their their um, Mm -hmm. way, way to salvation they they exactly thought what you say if you are in the covenant then this is the the rules for the covenant otherwise you are not in the covenant yes if, that's if, it and that's, that's this all. is it and this is what i i told you a, a few minutes ago christians don't realize in in general they do not if they don't do the law there's nothing distinguishing them from other people this this was the exactly. thing to to distinguish the people of yah from everyone else and i think and, and i'll pass it back to you what you say and what i say now people christians quite a few of them would call this a work-based salvation they just yeah. don't understand. You heard this, right? That's, yeah, yeah, I heard that. You know, and I would give an example, very simple and very, uh, like, you know, contemporary for this. It's like, for example, I'm a Brazilian, okay? And now I came to a land which is completely different from mine. Uh, it's Turkey, and I live in Turkey today. And I have to, as a, as a person that is within the boundaries of Turkey, I have, you know, to behave like a citizen of Turkey. Even if I'm not a citizen, you know, like I'm, I don't, I don't, I was not given the right to be a citizen or not. I have to behave like a citizen. That's the whole point. But in the Bible, it's the opposite. Actually, when you know, it say, Jesus says, like, you know, I'm like Paul, or even say, you guys have now the rights of those uh, of, that you're belonging in the country of God already. You are citizens, basically. Now, if I am a citizen, of course, I have to behave like a citizen. Right. There is no way that I can uh, live in another country, um, you know, and trying to apply my own laws in here from Brazil. It doesn't make sense. I'm in a different jurisdiction. Now, that's basically, I see basically that that's the difference. I am keeping the law here now, not because I... I, I am going to be saved someday, you know, but no, because Jesus said I am saved. So yeah. that's why I keep the law because I'm living like a I'm saved person. This, you know, I see very clearly where in the 10 commandments chapter in, in Exodus right. 20, if you open there in the first line, God says to the people of Israel, it says, I am your God who saved you from the land of Egypt. It's like, it's paid, it's grace, salvation by grace. Exactly. And then he comes, now, therefore, there shall not be gods, you know, before, before you. Me. So now he start keeping, giving the law, start, uh, you know, he start giving the law to the people after the act of salvation. So it means they are belonging already to the, to the covenant. Um, they, are, they are there, they're within the covenant. So because you are within the covenant, it's impossible not to keep the you know the amendments yeah. of the covenant exactly that's it but you that, know it doesn't doesn't even make sense uh, not so i think you mentioned this as well uh, you are saved from uh, from your sins basically which is breaking the commandments or transgression breaking the commandments exactly so yes. you are saved from the consequence or even the punishment which is eternal damnation and all all that so you are saved by grace meaning like you get a loan from a bank you need i don't know two million dollars okay here you are that's two million dollars do whatever you want nonetheless you have to pay it back monthly mm -hmm. otherwise exactly i want to take it back from you because i'm not gonna just give you money for nothing 
And I think uh, this is why so many times that debt, debtors mentioned in the Bible, you know, even parables, uh, people who owe this is a debt, some this imagery of debt, owing money. Uh, I think this is what uh, God wants to show people that f favor or grace is giving you upfront. You know now. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. You yeah. are there. If you do what I say, you will be there. You're not there now, but you yeah. will be. So this is the the problem. But um, I see. I yeah, see. Yeah, there's a shift. You know exactly what you're saying. Like uh, if you go in the Western theology, uh, you know you saw that. Of course, Western theology drank a lot from philosophy on the Greeks, and you know the four the, the fathers of the church. The you know the and so on. You we have the uh, like the patristic. It's very wide in, in, in the West, even to Protestants today. And, um, you know, I see that this East and West uh, ideas of law, it's a very important point. And that's why I start that in my thesis in the second chapter. Yeah, I, uh, I start mentioning, you know, how, how these ideas of law are so different to begin with. Okay, would you explain Paul's, that, please? Time. Yeah. Yeah, so... Anthropologically saying, you know, today there's many studies in an anthropological way, and there's a, this notion of, uh, of, a, of a guilt and shame perspective or worldview from, in the people of the, you know, the Middle East and people of the Semitic origins and so on, uh, especially here in this region or where I live. There's this huge uh, perspective. They, they basically they function, the society functions between shame and honor. So whatever is honorific, this is good for the society, this is good, this is, uh, this is a common good for everybody, right. everybody agrees on that. And whatever, it's shameful, it's, it's worse than to be guilty of something, it's, it's shameful, it's too big, you know, this shame-honor uh, perspective. In the West, this is different, we don't have this shame-honor perspective, we, are, we work by uh, a very different, uh, basically, uh, perspective, which is... Uh, Guilt and uh, you know how do you, how do you say that? Punishment. Uh, no, no, uh, uh, the one which is, has no problem. Uh, uh, not uh, innocent. The name in English. Innocent. Yeah, thank you. So if you are innocent or guilty, that's the whole perspective. You know, we're always trying to find the guilty of this or the innocence of that. We we like that. You know, and <laughs> when we when we function between this. So now Paul, it's, he, as an amazing missionary he was, he translated the Semitic culture of honor and shame into guilty and, and uh, innocence. And you see that later on this developed so well that all the, most of the forefathers that we had in the, the, the Catholic Church, they're all, they were all lawyers. Yeah, yeah. So they always have that just uh, righteousness by faith, uh, the, theolo the theology treatises, they are all written in a legal language regarding law, right? So um, that's the whole point, because the perspective of law in the West, it's so different from the, from the East, because they see law in the East, and the, even the, the Jewish, uh, I would say the, the Palestinian Judaism, that's, as Epicenter says, it, it saw much more law, related to the uh, lifestyle, you know, in a, in a behavior manner, more than, you know, a, a set of rules that you should oh, yeah. keep on falling and yeah. so on. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it changes the whole conversation, you know, if you, if you, if you keep that in, in perspective, this, this and is I, I think, I think that helped a lot to turn people away from the law, just the, just the vocabulary people use, law, transgression, sin, guilt yeah it's much easier to turn people away and then say okay this god is is just one he he wants to punish you and and he he just wants to find a guilty and then condemn people and send them to damnation and all that so the whole language changes the the perception of people of the torah which doesn't even mean law Right, it means mm -hmm. instructions or teaching, rather. Exactly. Or, or somehow you you show the way how to walk, and so many times you can read it. Just learn my ways. I I showed you my ways. 
walk in my ways. You know, it's just, it, it might, that's it. And, and I think it's the, it's the adversary or Satan who, who manipulates language for his advantage to turn people away. And this process started, as you said, perhaps with the Reformation. And by now, you just see the full fruit of it. And the fruit of turning, yeah, I would say, right? I would say that it, it be, uh, actually started even before oh, the yeah, Reformation. Yeah, sorry, yeah, of I would say, I would say that you know it started right there with Augustine when he he just just compar compartmentalized. You know, he make it uh, self uh, the, the 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 quest of the self. He reads the Bible and he applies to himself. So it became a very Western idea already. Individualism. The individual is the important, you know. So they look at the salvation of the individual, of the, the self, of the one, and, and completely excludes the, 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 you know, the idea really? of the whole, of the, of the covenant, of the people entering in another dimension now with, with the, the love of God and so on. So it, it, it just comes to a, to a self-perception. You know, right. you read, and, and that's why he reads Paul. You know, I would say, I love the, that quote, um, I forgot who said that now. I wrote here in my thesis somewhere, but I quoted so many, I don't remember anymore. But basically, the, the story or the history of Christianity it's like the history of 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 um uh how do you say that you know commentaries or perceptions of paul they start reading paul all throughout history and they start making history of christianity right there so i would say augustine was the the stumbling block for that he he was the first one uh that starts seeing paul very western Westerly, if you if you understand. No, I, I get it, and also I I think uh, you are right. Actually, it it didn't start with uh, with Luther or Reformation. Nonetheless, that was the start of the modern era of basically yeah, lawlessness. That's true. <laughs> and if you go back, and I I found many many um, quotes from so called church fathers for my. Um, work in uh, bachelors and it didn't it it doesn't seem to me that they had the the exact same idea as christians have now they held yeah, the law that's yeah, right that's true to, to a lot higher esteem they didn't think oh yeah. this was something like oh, of course there were people who wrote that but even just if you if you look at the way they lived they regulated their lives. There's so many times they go back to, to the law, even how to mm -hmm. organize them, so how to behave, how to love, how to handle money, business, whatever. So everything. Right. They would always talk about, you know, the the virtues of the exactly, law. Like if exactly. you put virtue of right. the, the law and just make a quick search in the in the in the patristic, you will see hundreds of virtues of the law. So what what is the law these guys are talking about a thousand seven hundred years ago? You know, like right. what is this law? Like I think I think um, the writings of Paul um, contributed a lot to the this diversion from the law, and I, I don't blame Paul at all because I believe at, this is intentional from the part of God to filter out people who who do not love the truth. Because they're just going to take the easier path. They're going to say, oh, yeah, the law is abolished, so goodbye. And and this is intention. It, this is his intention to make it difficult to understand. So we need to search mm -hmm. it and it, we need to go to him to show us what do you mean? Do you mean for, for 4,000 years, everybody was killed and destroyed if they didn't obey this law? And now... We can just forget it and live the way we yeah, want yeah, yeah. and That's just true. say, oh, yeah, I believe so in true. you. So, so this is a, a, a little bit silly, I think. Yeah, this the, whole, you know, the whole conception of abolishment of the law, I think I go, I think I, I exhaust perhaps in my thesis yeah. on this, you know, like this abolishment of the law. It's a huge misconception. Uh, you know, like uh, we believe there is sin today. If there is sin today, it's in the Bible. Sola Scriptura talking, 
sin is the break of the law. Yeah, well, right. if there's no law, there's no sin, my friend. If there's no sin, why Jesus had to come here? You know, why Jesus had to die? And if there is no death of Jesus, there is no grace. So what we are talking about? What is the whole thing? If there is no law, it's the building block for all the other understandings uh, of Christianity. So if there is no law, there is no sin. There is no sin. There is no grace. There is no grace. What we are talking about, basically. That's, right. And uh, that's so simple. And it, it appears that the Torah is much more than just a set of rules for the community. If you take that out of just just imagine a world without do, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, <laughs> thou shalt not steal. Yeah. If you take that out and you say, okay, it's free for all, that there would not, there, there couldn't be life on this. Yeah, you know, and, and something that calls my attention, especially that if you ask any Protestant, that's I see the gap right there. Uh, if you and you call any Protestant Protestant people, and then you say, "Well, okay," uh, the, so the ball, the law was abolished, and then I read the so you do shall you thou, you thou shall not kill commandments. and say, "Oh, is this is it?" Oh, yeah. Still, of course, yeah, they would say yes. This is still in, currently, but I see from the ten commandments, the fourth commandment is the problem. So, so why do you think that is? It's not, you know, I think that's uh, I think that's. <laughs> Very, very interesting. Uh, perhaps even eschatologically speaking, uh, there is a there is a meaning on that. It's impossible. I know I live in a Muslim country, which is technically should be keeping the Friday as the as the day of worship, right? But if you ask which day is today, today is Sunday, and which day the, the shops and everything is not working, yeah, it's especially Sunday. They don't work on Sundays. So I would I would say why how come that is happening why why this is happening the whole world it rests on Sunday who put this law who created that and then I see very clear throughout history uh, the attempts of the papacy to change the laws of God and especially this law the fourth law of the Sabbath um, I see you know in Daniel also what the the friends there uh, did. Not to right. bow down in images exactly. and so on, and perhaps today the Protestants they are seeing the, the importance of not bowing down to images and worshiping images. Yes, but I ask them, you know, more importantly, perhaps or equally important, I would say, than the image in worshiping is the Sabbath day, is the Saturday, is the is the seventh day of the week. It's not any day. Sabbath is not a day that I choose. Right. It's the seventh day of the week and everybody knows when the first day comes but nobody knows when the seventh is of course so that's yeah. why i see a big gap you know in the in the concept of 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 uh of keeping the law and how in, how important is catologically speaking it is for the church to understand that when jesus says you know i'm living in a muslim country and jesus himself he says i am the lord of the sabbath you know, when he right. says that, what what what, would, what the 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 people around him would think about him? Well, Christians what think. What talking about? <laughs> Christians think, oh, he's the Lord of the Sabbath, so every day is Sabbath now, so you can do whatever yeah, you want. Yeah, so every day is Sabbath now, right? So, but I see very clearly uh, con connection. I am the Lord of the Sabbath and the Creator of the Sabbath. You right. know, who can? I I see a deep connection right there. So. Uh, how how come people cannot see that? So we, that's for me, you know, in my thesis, I was blown away when yeah. I saw that. I, I, listen, I think the 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 the, the, um, the dividing line between people who who make it and who do not is the love of truth, because uh, Paul wrote this about the love of truth. I think is uh, is Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. I try to find this. Yeah, yeah. Hang on for a second. I think he said uh, that. Uh, just a second. Oh yeah, and about the Antichrist and all that. Hang on yeah, for yeah. a second. Give me a second, Daniel. You you hear that? Sure, sure. Basically, what I saw, you know, I was saying like uh, in the commandment of law. And, and especially the Sabbath, I see a deep connection there with the, you know, the acts 
of creation of the Almighty God, uh, you know, and, and Jesus saying, uh, I am the truth, you know, like, uh, I am, I'm here. Look, hey, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I see this connection deep, uh, you know, when I, I just understand that, uh, that the, uh, when they say abolishment of the law, and whose authority was that? So I, that's another another question that I asked in my thesis. Whose authority someone right. could change such such understanding of law or su such practices of the law? You know? And then I went and I saw in history. I I've, I've have many many uh, you know many examples in the three hundreds. The uh, it was much easier to keep uh, you know. Think, uh, perhaps creating a syncretism between uh, Roman religion right. and, you know, and Christian in, in Jewish religion, I'll say even Christianity, I wouldn't say Christianity in that point, but in what the, the doctrine of the, the, the Messiah, you know, and then uh, that was too easy for them to just keep doing the practices of the Roman, the right. Romans, you know, and keeping the sun day, right. The day of the right. sun, uh, and the worship of Mithras and so on. I, I feel this this sort of um, accommodation of pagan practices and, and religious syncretism, this is just something characteristic of Christianity throughout the mm -hmm. centuries. I, I think this is the main uh, trait of Christianity. Obviously, uh, led by the Catholic Church later on, and and the main main line church, because mm -hmm. they needed power, they needed money, and power over people, so they had to make this this unholy marriage between the the ruling class, the secular ruling class, and the religious rulers. And once you once you make that connection and relationship, you you just they just made it tighter and tighter, and and obviously they had to give up the law. And just one more thing, you mentioned Christ or uh, Jesus being the truth. This was the the passage which says, and with all deceivableness is this is Thessalonians second letter uh, chapter two verse ten. Mm -hmm. of, uh, so with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of truth that they might be saved so there's a key, mm -hmm. key thing to receive the love of truth because that will drive you forward to to find out what god really wants and not what other people say or what i want him to want but what he really wants and if you love the truth then you will always just gravitate back to to his instructions which is the torah yeah so that's indeed what do you think um do you see this this is not particular about your paper but what do you think about um muslims because i lived about for uh, i lived seven years in london and and i met many different people and what i saw there was exactly the same what I what I observe in regards to Christianity. There is a watering down of Islam, right? Yeah. Did you um, did you observe that or have you? Yeah, I see here. You know, especially I don't know. My uh, it was interesting experience to me because I got in contact with many Muslims. You know, and I have many Muslim friends in here, and I see that's a huge especially where i am i'm in turkey right so there is a huge ignorance regarding the the scriptures you know in a general sense like uh so there's a huge ignorance they really they really don't uh i remember you know i have a friend and uh he he i i gave him a bible he wanted to read and so on so i said okay so you read you know just go through uh, start reading the stories and so on because he thinks that the bible is like the quran right so i said well it's it's not even similar you should read yeah. to, to have an idea so i i gave him and he started reading you know in genesis you know he saw the story of abraham you know and all oh, joseph and everything that's a story right it's, the, 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 there's a history there and so on it's 
very simple language and everything in the Torah and everything, you know, and he went reading and he told me, Daniel, I'm so impressed. You guys have so much information. <laughs> and I was like, well, dude, you know, that's true. You know, I, I wish all the Muslims, uh, you know, just would break this, this, I don't know, this misconception, this prejudice against the Bible itself. And they would read, you know, it's a book that they should read. Right. I read the Quran many times. I have a Quran right here and I read it in many versions. You know, I have, uh -huh. I read that and I have all marked. This is, I mean, this is the Quran in an English translation too. So I think, you know, it's important to, you know, pe for people to read uh, re uh, the, the sacred books, right? From, I, I would say even sacred books, but the books of the traditions, the big right. traditions, uh, read the Tana, read the, you know, uh, the Midrash, read the, you know, the Talmud. This is our this stuff that you sh is sitting there for a long time in history. And if you know, if you don't know the classic books of the traditions, you basically, uh, you're talking nonsense. So I see that, you know, it's a huge ignorance in a Muslim world as a general, uh, whatever is, uh, you know, regarding religion of Judaism or regarding Christianity, especially, and yeah, many things they, they would, I would agree with them regarding, you know, especially the Catholic tradition, the Western mindset. And as I'm saying, the Roman church, uh, what they, they grabbed from the Roman religion, right? And the, I, what, what the, the Christians would say as the, uh, the idolaters or the, you know, uh, anyways, as they say here the, in, in, in Turkey, the, the Gavurs, you know, the, the Gavur religion, which is the Kufar and so on. So, anyways, uh, I think uh, it would be much less problematic if they read. There's a huge misconception, and that's all. That's what I would say. Right, right. So, there are many people, I think, during history and even nowadays, who categorize the Torah. You know, the ceremonial law and all that. So oh, yeah. What do you, when do you think... Uh, that started and what is your take on that uh ceremonial you know this is something it's it's a little bit for me even in my when i was researching it was hard to put a scope on that because this started much like you know before even christianity uh there was like certain categorizations Whatever, Sears opened. <laughs> so uh, I see. I see that there is a, um, uh, you know, it's a very hard uh, topic for, for just trying to scope the classification of law. It's wow, it's a daunting task because if you go back in the Jesus days, they already classifying laws, you know, and 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 whatever dividing into things in there and here. So what I see that perhaps in Paul's mind, it's more. I mean, I'm talking about Paul now, you know, like what Paul sees as law, uh, it varies in such, uh, in different, in different topics. Uh, he used the, the, the word nomos for law. And I see this as the Torah, not only as the Ten Commandments, right. when he using the word nomos. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, so, and then I also see what is called the works of the nomos. So ergatunemu in, in, in Greek. So this expression is, is hugely debated among scholars. Uh, you know, Hans, uh, what is his name? Hans, well, I have, anyways, I don't have the whole names in my mind, but, you know, we have huge, uh, there are so many scholars, and Pauline tradition is huge. You can imagine that. It's 2,000 years yeah, of, of Paul uh, commenting and so on. But basically, uh, we have there, for me, big names it was James Dunn. You know, uh, James Dunn. He he talks a lot about the, this works of law. And I have a personal friend. Uh, it's a Greek uh, theologian uh, that lives today in Cyprus. His name is Kim Papayuanou. Oh yeah, you uh, cite, he was a cite him quite often. Yeah, I cited him. Uh, he he has an amazing job. He, I mean, he's made an amazing work, uh, which is Israel Covenant and Law. This book basically gave me the whole uh, idea, you know, of, of writing this topic and so on, going for this. Uh, he writes basically that uh, he shows, you know, uh, from 
really uh, scripturally and, and outside also, you know, scholarly speaking, it shows what would be the best way of understanding works of the law. Because as it was, in my opinion, of course, you know, in my opinion, I saw many, uh, I, there is a guy there uh, from the Catholic tradition also, Matthew something, uh, you, he wrote a whole thesis in, uh, you know, on the patristic of works of the law and so on. But, you know, looking into the terminology and also in the patristics and also, you know, and uh, how would a Jew of the first century think regarding works of the law? Um, yeah, for me, it was the best King Papa Iwanu. And he, he basically summarized all the visions and he's showing that this is actually works related to the temple okay yeah, yeah yeah works of the law it's works related to the temple so uh whatever the law makes you work right so it's really ritualistic uh the baths the you know the the sacrificial system you know the the garments and so on so all the this this temple uh works there they, they he would call it works of the law in pauline's mind and this is, uh, it makes sense in a series of, of, yeah. of, of perspectives, oh, yeah, of you course. can see. Yeah, it just, uh, it really makes sense because of the ethni ethnic boundaries that we see in the first century between Jews and Gentiles and all these things now, Gentiles becoming part of yeah. the covenant, right? I wouldn't say part because they were part of the covenant with Abraham through Jesus. And now they wanted to sacrifice in the temple. But how they would sacrifice in the temple? If they were Gentiles, the Jews would never accept right. that. So now there was a, a huge uh, uh, trouble for Paul to solve. So based, yeah. Social, socially, more than theologically, you know? That, that anyway, would... so I see that. That would be represented by the the breaking of the carpet or um, the veil of the temple. Yes, so that would be so the dividing. There comes, so there comes the the whole uh, you know Christian perspective of you know like just abolishing the law, but actually, is the law is not abolished but fulfilled, which means now the law has uh, has a. Um, the same meaning, bigger. It's right. bigger. So it's not now oh, that yeah, you'll be I, sacrificing, I going to the temple, but you know, you keeping the law. You, you continue as a as a as a believer, you know, in in or or a, I would say a, a Jew, you know, like a, or a I'd say you becoming you don't you not becoming a Jew, but you're becoming like part of the covenant as a foreigner. And you are not going to sacrifice in the temple for that. You don't need, you know? Right. Yeah. So the whole thing of works of the law, it's connected to that. And Actually, it makes much more sense in, in the first century. Even, even now you say this, even belief or faith or emuna or pistis, mm -hmm. whatever, even that makes more sense in this system. Because as long as you, you, you don't even need to sacrifice now. And you realize your sin, and you just say, "Okay, sorry," and I and, and I move on, and and that mm, gives a much um, bigger emphasis to belief because before you had to take the animal and you saw the whole thing, but now you don't see it. Now you just think of the sacrifice of Hamashiach, and then you believe yes. that, and you repent. And sincerely, you, you feel bad and you, you feel guilty and you feel condemned. And you become ceremonially it, clean. Ex exactly. That's the whole point. And you change and you move on. So hence, Shaul or Paul writes that this is about belief because you don't see it no more, the sacrifice. This is one thing. And the, the other thing is nomos often means i think different things and i had the same uh, or similar idea or view on this as you just mentioned that many many times it means sacrificial system even the whole um, letter to the hebrews that's the whole chapter 10 mentions so many times blood sacrifice temple ritual priest whatever 
And you cannot say, oh, this is about abolishing the law. No, this is about abolishing ritual sacrifice and temple work. And that is the work of the law, what you do there. I believe. Yeah, that's it. So, um, that's why that's why yeah. the, the complication with Luther, the Luther also, because he sees everything, all the laws, keeping the Sabbath, you know, behaving yeah, exactly. or whatever, as works of the law. And that's a huge misconception because in the Jewish mindset, he's not seeing uh, keeping of the Ten Commandments as works of the law, but he's seeing the ritualistic uh, purification, you know, the 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 rights as as part of the uh you know of becoming uh, you know a part of the covenant and so on so so that i mean or not even l losing your status in the covenant in the so covenant. yeah that's why uh, I... and i think this yeah, this discussion came up because of the that sea scrolls that start to bring a new light regarding judaism of the first century is not what only what we see here when we look at uh, today's Israel, we see like a uh, Orthodox Judaism there, and we think that Jews are only that. Yeah, especially right. I'm saying the Western right, mindset, right, right. right? Yeah. And if you go to the first century, it's huge difference. There's a huge difference. Oh, Anyways, yeah. that that's. Uh, oh, that's right. I, I I get it. Mm, in terms of the the Qumran, and I, I think there. At, at least I can see, I've been following this in the last maybe 12 years. So not before, but now. But even those 12 years, I've observed a, a definite resurgence of keeping Torah and um, giving back the, the esteem to the law what it, it really deserves there is a shift i think i, I think the truth mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. coming out not only regarding the torah and and the, our need to to adhere to that but also i believe in regards to the trinity and the nature of incarnation incarnation so i think this is truly a time when 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 the truth will prevail I'm not saying today or because of us, but I'm saying because of millions of people now have the information, right? Yeah. Which, which they didn't correct. have before the internet. But yes, now you have. You just go have. online, you you listen to three podcasts, six hours, and you can change oh your my. life. And you can learn you know, more. No, in four minutes, in four but, minutes, you can have all information you need. For, exactly. You know, exactly. for changing your mindset, so... And I, I believe this this change is happening. Nonetheless, I wanted to ask you about um, so work of the law. I think I understand now, but I read something about the, in regards to the Shabbat or Sabbath. I think we agree that's important and that that's still. What do you think about the rest of the festivals? In the biblical festivals, yeah, what think, is your take mm -hmm, on that? I see. I you know. That's a, for me, it's a current uh, work for me also. It's a current uh, study, perhaps, on the f festivals and everything. And I see, uh, you know, I see the festivals to me, especially, they're very important. I see all the festivals as, uh, eschatologically speaking, very, very meaningful, you know, full of meanings uh, regarding this, uh, you know, the life of, of, of salvation. You know, I see that. In the in the whole Torah, in the whole Tanah, in the whole Bible, I see one aspect that God wants to to share with mankind, and this is salvation. It's to is to put them, uh, is to make them uh, more probably uh, heirs of the covenant, right? Is to make them to live in, within the boundaries right. of God's kingdom. Right. So it's God's kingdom bringing, and of course there is different language there's the salvation language there is the you know the covenant uh language there's many many uh, ideas on that and theologies regarding this but i see that all the same and i see that the festivals especially they have big impact on uh, on they perhaps uh like just moving the you know the the meanings throughout history all together you know uh, for example, today is the, 
as they call uh, the you know the how they call it in English I don't forget it I forgot it as, uh, uh, I don't know. in the in the Catholic tradition is today is the oh. Palm, Palm Sunday they call oh yeah Palm yeah. Sunday yeah, yeah, right Palm Sunday. is the day that Jesus rose from the dead and so on and we have some different ideas perhaps it's more likely you know later on on the on the uh, on the on the month and so on but i see that uh here there is a big uh, huge difference also between what the the catholics or the catholic tradition put as festivals to the western mentality and also what is the biblical yeah. i don't see that um i don't see that as a huge uh, thing, especially for me personally, you know, for me to apply them and to do, because it's not something that I would do. Uh, like I, I don't have power to change a, na a nation and, and right. change their, their, their ways of resting. I rest in these days because I, biblically speaking, they're oh, you like, mean you, know, you follow the so follow the mm, yeah, yeah. I keep the, I, I try to rest right. of them. You know, I tr I try to. Uh, to keep them as my Sabbath, like Easter, uh, you mean? Okay. Yeah. But like what, my, what, yeah, I, my, what my I was Sabbaths. what I was wondering um, uh, was about the the biblical feasts. You know, um, Leviticus twenty three uh, lists them because I obviously I had a few conversation with my teachers and tutors and all them in regards to this because what I tried to highlight was you as Adventist say the Sabbath is important however in that same chapter when he lists all the other high days they are not important mm -hmm. and I see there um, some sort of logical conflict logical problem that, no? I, would, I would agree i would agree so i would agree yes so why uh, do you think yeah, why, logical... why do you think that is yeah i think uh you know again again uh, the way that and, and he enters now in in the way of celebrating it you know the way of celebrating is is also perhaps and now we enter in a, again another tradition right so the point is, I think I see the sacredness of the thing. Uh, and I mean, the Sabbath is not uh, even, we, we, it's not this, this uh, how can I say? Uh, it's not even questionable, doubt, doubtful, you know, it, mm -hmm. it's not it's questionable not question. at all. Like the Sabbath is not even questionable. It's throughout the Bible and everywhere. And the feast also, the importance of that through the history of the prophets showing something it's amazing so in my cons concept today uh the feasts they are uh they are telling me a big bigger story again oh, yeah, right. they're not only important by themselves you know because they are the feast so you should do that i see that this is huge it's much huger i mean much bigger yeah. than 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 the 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 he the the little point of not doing anything or whatever or resting that day yeah, as a Sabbath and so on. So uh, for me, that's the way I see the feasts mm -hmm. and basically. No, I, I was just. So I I have in my calendar here, like you know, especially the the Pesach and everything, and I have here um, also the biblical feasts. I would go for. Yeah, of course. I have all of them in my calendar, and we have a special prayer on them. But yeah, I I wouldn't I would go to what is in the in the in, in the Tanah more than to the traditional way of, of right. doing it. No, That's, because if you understand, I think I think uh, if you think about this, the the biggest mm -hmm. difference or, or biggest jump would be obviously no one's going to start killing and stealing and. You know that's just not what you of do. Of course, and this yeah. is this is a reason for the um, Shabbat to be changed because yes. that's something that's people easily can just say, "Oh, that's just a day, so let's do it Sunday." It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. All the all the other commandments in um, of the ten, they are quite um, 
how can I say um, tangible, maybe clear, but almost tangible, like yeah. almost like you know you can do this or not. But but yeah, the, but the course. Shabbat is something different. It's, it's something in your head, really. No, it's not. Of course, you do things and don't do things. And this is the same with the festivals. And I think if you think about festivals as the whole year would be revolving around these days. So you, you'd you have yeah. to prepare. You cannot just turn up like, OK, I go to the movie and next day is Pesach. So you need to prepare for that, to stand there and to, to be able to say, OK, I'm worthy mm -hmm. as much as I can I and can be to to receive that. Um, mm, the blessing that comes with it. So so it, it would help people to change and, and do the self reflections. And I think I have yeah. one more question for this time, and that would be um, circumcision. I couldn't, but I, now, now I guess I understand as an Adventist, you'd say that circumcision was um, basically replaced with um, immersion or baptism. Or, but I'm not sure. What do you think of circumcision as a as an as an eternal covenant given to Abraham? I understand. Yeah, for me, you know, I think it's uh, circumcision is a very important thing. Uh, it is important to do for those who are uh, coming from a Jewish uh, family, a Jewish ethnic race, and I would say that because. Uh, you know, I see the circumcision, it has a, it had a very important meaning to the Jewish nation throughout the ages. And, um, and it still does, you know, the point is for as, as, as someone that is not a Jew, I, 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 I was not born a Jew. My mom is not Jew. So I am a Gentile, <laughs> if you understand in the biblical terms. <laughs> so, yeah, I, we, yeah, we, especially, you know, when, if you see the discussions in the New Testament concerning that, the, the, those who, who were not circumcised should be circumcised now to enter in the temple or not. So Paul starts saying, you know, like, because you were not born from a Jewish mother, basically, it's, it's not a need. You don't need to go in and sacrifice in the temple because, you know, you believe in Jesus. And you are part of the covenant, not to be, uh, not needing in being circum circumcised. So, in my mind today, I don't see circumcision as a need for for a specific a specific covenant uh, approval right. or entering in the in the, in the covenant. I am entering the covenant through Jesus, who accepts me within the covenant made with Abraham, right? And this Abraham covenant, it, it's given to the Jews. So the Jews, they have right on that. Uh, and that's why I see Paul's discussions. Um, another, uh, another uh, one more mention with this King Papa Ioannos, he, sa he says in his book, he goes very deeper into this uh, circumcision um, thing. He sees that, you know, like uh, this, the whole discussion of entering <clears throat> and keeping the law or not was the circumcision because circumcision in their minds of the Jews were the entrance ticket for you to be yeah. part of the uh, right. Abra Abrahamic covenant. And Paul goes against that and says, you know, basically, you, you wouldn't need that, you know, if you if you were not a born a Jew. But if you want to enter in the covenant, even so, you can uh, you can keep con uh, start keeping the law uh, without being circumcised. This is a specific point right there. Uh, I don't. I don't see this idea. Of, okay, so you don't need to keep any law or anything. No, you don't need to keep the circumcision or the the laws related to the temple. I understand circumcision as related to the temple okay. too, and basically that's what I see. That's what. Yeah. Uh, just one. I, I. This. This just occurred to me now, while you were speaking, and also a few times in the past. And I haven't really made a big, uh, big deal about this. But nonetheless, I think it is a big deal. Um, the method you decide who is an Israelite. I think Jewish is very misleading. Even just yeah. the term is misleading. A, that's true. So it's very yeah. misleading. Let's just accept. 
I don't, but let's just accept that the people in Israel now are Israelites, biblical Israelites. I don't think so, but let's just take yeah. it that. Which tribe are they from? Okay, so how, how could they prove that they are the biblical Israelites as there is absolutely no method of proving that any one of those people related to Abraham because there's just no way. You know, there's just too much time mm -hmm. has passed. Yeah. They can say, oh, my mother was a Jew. Okay, fine. How about Bible doesn't even care about the mother, never. It always on the yeah. patrilinear. So Abraham, Jacob, Isaac, David, uh, Solomon. So mother doesn't even yeah. count. If you see even in the in the line of Jesus, you know there are many yeah, right. people that were not even so none of Israelites. Them, they, women yeah. don't even count in the lineage. So that's that's number one. So that you don't even know now. But the other thing is, how would you know if you weren't Jew, or I wasn't a Jew? Mm -hmm. Even if, say, my mother is not a Jew, there's no way of checking. So just saying, if I just say, oh, I'm not, I'm not a Jew, therefore I don't need to circumcise, how can you prove that you're not a Jew? You understand? I think this yeah, is that's, quite that's, misleading that's to aso associate the biblical Israelites with those people because everybody thinks, okay, they are Jewish, so the law is for them. No. We cannot prove who Jew and who is not. No, yeah, no matter. Today, yeah, you understand the, I would the say dilemma. In this setting, mm -hmm, this in this setting today, you know, where you don't have really a clear et ethnic uh, understanding of things, it's very uh, misleading. I would agree because you know countries were were actually measured before by your ethnicity and not by the land you're by this 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 right, landmarks exactly. of exactly. borders are so so recently we, we don't in, in you know in, in jesus times it didn't happen you could live re very well in china and be a jew you know like uh or be an israelite jew comes from the judah right those who live in judah the same thing for arabs arabs they're called arabs not because there's a race ethnic uh boundary yeah, the, the area they're, there's the area, it's the Arabic, uh, you know, exactly. the Arab Arabia right there. So, uh, I think that's that's the whole practice. They should be. Uh, I would say that you know, when I mean by Jew is those who are uh, acquainted with the tradition, the Judaism, Jewish tradition, and so on. And that's why, for me, as as, as an Adventist today, it wouldn't make much sense to practice the the Jewish. Right traditions regarding the law you know but i see the law as important i practice the law uh but even even as then, much as i can can you <laughs> can you see yourself now making a distinction within the law in your head you say there are some things in the law for jews nonetheless we don't know who they are and there are some things for everyone so i think even subconsciously we all infected by these ideas of Christian tradition. Yeah, this could be true. See, this could be true. I cannot negate the whole thing. You know, you're saying I, I have to go deeper into that. I, right. this no, is, no problem. You know, no problem. In, I'm, I am in a journey and I'm in of a, course, in a, no, in a no. I don't want to talk always here. going through. Into but we have, we have that, um, you know, especially in Adventism, we are very open throughout the whole world. There's, many kind of Adventist perspectives regarding right. this. And, I, know, yeah. uh, I mean, I have a very good, uh, very good professors there today. They are in Israel and they, and they practice, they do many things that the Jews there do, you know? So uh -huh. I mean, I'm, I'm very distant from that, but uh, that's interesting the way they do that. Um, well, I, th I think I see, I see <laughs> that the importance uh, is catalogically, you know, because I see something growing today, uh, an anti-Semitism. I don't agree with this term neither, but oh, just yeah. to sociologically speaking, this is I, a term. I, I right? agree, actually. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I, I don't agree because, you know, what, what is Semite today? Oh, yeah, yeah that's what, what I say. Today? You know, yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous. So what is, who is Semite today? So the term I don't agree with, but sociologically speaking, you know, in, 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 the, in the social sphere, yeah, I would say 
it's an important thing. Uh, and I see this uh, anti-Semitism growing. I would say the hate against Judaism and, and against the Jewish practice and everything on the name of Israel, right? Because they, they call themselves the Jews, right? So um, I see that for me, it's kind of scatologically even. I see this hate everywhere. It's amazing. There must to be something there. You know, uh, regarding this hate and and so on. I have, I and have a, yeah, this. I have a theory about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, I do. <laughs> you know, anyways, I mean, I, I would say that this is, uh, you know, when I read the Bible, I I see a, a very, I don't only see that a very, opaque, you know, old uh, bunch of writings. No, I I read this in a very updated way i see that what is happening today what is in there and all the the, the circumstances all the the big uh, i would say the great controversy that happens you know in in in, in the in the in the background of the bible is still going on and i see you know how much the jewish people was hated Throughout the ages, I mean, I, I was reading a, a paper on, on the 1490s uh, in, in, in Europe. You know, they were just, uh, it, it is amazing. It's insane, the hate that the Jews saw throughout the ages. So for me, this is, this is somehow attractive, you know, how, why, why this is happening? Yeah. Why this much hate? Uh, and I see that it comes a lot from Christianity. So it came oh, yeah. now, now it's coming from, from Islam and, and it's, it's, I agree with it, that. this for me is something amazing. And, and I, that's why, you know, I, I, I see that the Jewish people, when I say Jewish people, those who practice the law and the, the and the Torah and try to, to keep the commandments, they are, uh, they are very hated. And, and I put myself in the sack with yeah. them, you know, I think this, exactly this, this is it, because I keep the law and I believe in Jesus too. So I am in this bucket too. This is what and I feel the same hate. This is what I wanted to say. I think the common denominator is not your ethnic background. It is the Torah and it has always been the common denominator. Yeah. Even from the beginning when so-called Christianity started to uh, part ways with so-called Judaism back in the days in the early Christian tradition. Even then, the problem was people who kept Sabbath, circumcision, dietary law, mm -hmm. and in general, mm -hmm. Torah, they wanted to depart from them, everybody, because the secular power dictated a different set of laws and you cannot uh, do both. So you had to mm. compromise and, and that's, and this is the, the common denominator and that's why people, and this, I, I, I don't think anti-Semitism is a, is a correct word because of, for many reasons, but nonetheless, the name Israel, Jew, Torah, law, it, the hate is against this, not the people, the adversary yeah. in the background stirring up this hate against Torah because he wants yeah. wants to deter people from following it. You understand what I'm trying to That's say? That's true. I agree, I agree. I yes, agree. Most, most of the people will always comply with the, yeah. the outside pressure. And there's a few... What is amazing to me, yeah. What is amazing to me, I don't know how much you're acquainted with that, but uh, you know, the Adventists, they have been studying the book of Revelation for more than a hundred oh, yeah. years now, and there's lots of commentaries and and no and 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 I mean in and lectures on this and so on. There's a very good teacher that I love. I have a book on him here. Um it's he's a French he's a French professor in one of the Adventist universities. I think he's retired, I don't know, but uh, Jacques Dukan, mm -hmm. Jacques Dukan. He's he has a Jewish background, really, and he, you know, he accepted Jesus and he became one of our professors there. And he writes amazingly on 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 the on Revelation, especially, you know, like 
he goes into Revelation and he sees this book as a as an amazing treatise of 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 history of the Jews of the, the of those I wouldn't say Jews as you said but those who kept the commandments right, yeah, of yeah. God and and believes in Jesus right there you know so this goes through history and uh, all the persecution that exactly. happened yeah and it's happening you know right there uh in before our eyes nowadays and and the culmination of everything so that's why i see the sabbath has a very important point yeah. in there oh, yeah absolutely. the law you know as, as a yeah. very uh, eschatological point in, in if you go in uh revelation 14 6 you ha you, you see an angel proclaiming the the the, the uh that the the Message. judgment of of god has has be, has started and the judgment of god i mean he he calls the attention of the whole world he says uh fear god and keep, keep his, his commandments. commandments right yes exactly so right there is like something that is happening right now today yeah. people are start coming as you said millions of people start seeing the importance of keeping the commandments and then you see also that um Later on in, in Revelation, uh, you know, I think it's 12 and, 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 and 13, you see these two women. Uh, in 13 uh, and 14, you see two women there. No, it's 12 and 13, sorry. Uh, I'm 12. Just mm -hmm. mess. Yeah, so the woman you clothed, see these two women. In the one, sun. Yeah, clothed with in the sun. And then you have the other woman, which goes to the desert, and there is a dragon after her. You know, and you have all the uh, if you if you compare verses with verses, including in, in in the you know in the Old Testament there in the Tana, you you just you see amazing picture, an amazing picture of what uh, is God's people today and what what they are facing, and and especially because they keep the commandments of God, they are being persecuted, yeah. as you said. So. I th it's, it's always, and, and this is my last word, and, and I pass it back on to you so you can uh, um, say your um, final thoughts. But this persecution, this book has always been about people who believed and adhered to, to Torah and, and God's instructions. It's never been about mm -hmm. nobody else. Of course, there's yeah. there's a highlighted role for a specific people who is Israel, and we are yet to see who they really are. Nonetheless, we will. But besides them, this book is for the people. the The message you mentioned is is Revelation twelve and fourteen, I I believe, uh, or something mm -hmm. or fourteen or something like that. The people who who keep the the laws and the belief of the Messiah. Of the this, Messiah. This exactly. too, you need this too. You need faith because your faith will will provide you with the with the resources to keep the law. Because if I don't believe, there's no reason to keep the law because I just yes, don't believe. Exactly. And you can keep the law, but if you don't believe that's that that doesn't make no sense anyway so so belief i, I keep the I law, keep law and i believe in the messiah i keep the law because these are the commandments and the and the and the rules i would say or the amendments of the covenant and i believe in the messiah because he provides me a way of you know of keeping clean cle clean yeah keep myself exactly. clean exactly. for for continue to keep to keep and to stay within the covenant. He is the way that keeps me in, within the covenant, yeah. despite of, 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 you know, of doing it or not. But for me, I need him to allow me to enter in the covenant. And I need the law now to continue yeah. uh, within the covenant. I think this is a, this is a very important message, not, not just your, your paper, but also in general for people to understand. This is, if they could understand this, there might be change in, in terms of how generally believers approach Torah and law. Daniel, I thank you for your time and please share. Yeah, it was a pleasure. It was excellent. It was awesome. Please share any kind of contact information, whatever you want, where people can find you. And I will provide that in the description. 
and and I thank you for yeah. Your time. Uh, you can contact me on my Instagram. It's Oliver Dan with two N's in the end. Oliver Dan, uh, and there is a little uh, how to call this hat there. Yeah, hat. so you can find me there. Uh, you can I don't know. You can yeah message me through Instagram or also in Twitter. Oliver Dan is the same. Not Twitter anymore. Now it's X. I always forget. Uh, so, yeah, you just message me. We will talk. It will be nice. Okay, excellent. Thank you for your you time. You can read also in Academia. Oh just yeah, Academia. Not <laughs> Edu, and then Academia. Daniel. Edu, yeah. That's a... Okay. So yeah. thank you again, and we gonna pick up from here. Goodbye. Thank you.